Good morning. Welcome to first grade poetry recital. Good morning. My name is Ellie Spear. I would really like to recite Sick by Shel Silverstein. I cannot go to school today, said little Peggy and McCray. I have the measles and the mumps, a gash, a rash, and purple bumps. My mouth is wet, my throat is dry, I'm going blind in my right eye. My tonsils are as big as rocks. I counted 16 chicken pox, and there's one more, that's 17. And don't you think my face looks green? <laughs> my leg is cut, my eyes are blue, and might be in somatic flu. I <coughs> ah, and uh, 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 chill, <laughs> sneeze, and gasp, and choke. I'm sure that my left leg has broke. <laughs> my hip hurts when I move my chin. My belly button's caving in. My back is wrenched, my ankle sprained. My appendix pains each time it rains. My nose is cold. My toes are numb. I have a sliver in my thumb. My neck is stiff. My voice is weak. I hardly whisper when I speak. I have a hangnail and my heart is what? What's that you say? You say today is Saturday? Goodbye. <laughs> Going out to play. <laughs> Hi, my name is Evan, and my poem is My Puppy Likes the Water. My puppy likes the water, my puppy likes to swim. I've never seen a puppy who swims as much as him. He swims not on the surface, but only underneath. And maybe I should warn you, he has very scary teeth. Whenever people see him, they're frightened of his grin. Or maybe it's his lack of fur, or maybe it's his fin. If you should buy a puppy, just get the kind that bikes. Don't be like me. I bought mine at a store that only sells shikes. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Sasha Bramsky, and I would like to recite The Sun by Gareth Lancaster. Don't you think the sun is bright? I wonder where it goes at night. Does it sleep or does it hide? Or is the moon its other side? Does it hide behind the hills late at night as outside chills? Or do you think it needs to rest from all that warming it does best? Could it even have a home, maybe in London or even in Rome? Or does it just float around, moving slowly town to town? Yes, I think it must do that. After all, the earth's not flat, so the sun goes round and round, spreading sunshine on the ground. Hi, my name is Carson Alvin. I'm a cute cat by Mary Britton Miller. The black cat yawns, opens her jaws, stretches her legs, and shows her claws. Then she gets up, stands on four long, still legs, and yawns some more. She shows her sharp teeth, she stretches her lip, her slice of a tongue turns up at the tip. She lifts herself on her delicate toes. She arches her back as high as it goes. She lets herself down with particular care and pads away with her tail in the air. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Claire Allen. I'm going to be reading you Saw My Teacher on a Saturday. Saw my teacher on a Saturday, can't believe it's true. Saw her buying groceries like normal people do. <laughs> she reached for bread and turned around and then she caught my eye and gave a smile and said hello. I thought that I would die. 
Oh, hi, hello, Miss Stevens. I mumble like a fool. I guess I thought that teachers type spend all their time at school. To make the situations worse, my mom was at my side. So many rows of jars of cans, so little room to hide. Oh, please, I thought, don't tell my mom what I did yesterday. I closed my eyes and held my breath. I hope she'd go away. <laughs> Some people think it's fine to let our teachers walk about, but when it comes to Saturday, they shouldn't let them out. <laughs> Sarah Andretti. My poem is Catch a Little Rhyme. Once upon a time, I caught a little rhyme. I set it on the floor, but it ran right out the door. I chased it on my bicycle, but it melted into an icicle. I scooped it in my hat, but it turned into a cat. I caught it by the tail, but it stretched into a whale. I followed it in a boat, but it turned into a goat. When I fed it tin and paper, it became a tall skyscraper. Then it grew into a kite and flew far out of sight. Hi, my name is Asher Bagley, and I would like to recite the poem, Be Glad Your Nose is on Your Face, by Jack Perlowski. Be glad your nose is on your face, not pasted on some other place. For if it were where it is not, you might dislike your nose a lot. Imagine if your precious nose were sandwiched in between your toes. That clearly would not be a treat for you. Be forced to smell your feet. <laughs> your nose would be a source of dread were it attached atop your head. It soon would drive you to despair, forever tickled by your hair. Your Within your ear, your nose would be an absolute catastrophe for when you were obliged to sneeze, your brain would rattle from the breeze. <laughs> your nose instead through thick and thin remains between your eyes and chin, not pasted on some other place. Be glad your nose is on your face. Good morning. My name's Luciana. My poem's called Golden Sun. Great, glorious golden sunshine down on me today. You are the life of all this earth, you magic rays. You are the life of bird and plant, all must bend on you. Shine down, great sun, the whole day long. Shine from the heavens blue. And I will welcome your golden rays, for you mean life to me. And you mean happiness and health, strength and energy. Shine down on flower and field and never say goodbye. Forever and ever give us your light out the wide blue sky. Hello, my name is Gavin and I'll be reciting um, The Strangers. <clears throat> Said I'll take the T-bone sticker. A soft voice mood. Oh wow. And I looked up and realized the waitress was a cow. Mistake. Forget the steak, I'll have the, seafood, the chicken then. Then I heard a click, it was just my luck. The bus boy was a hen. <laughs> I screamed. Okay, okay, no foul today, I'll have the seafood dish. Then I looked to the kitchen doors, the cook was a fish. I screamed, is there anyone working here who's an onion or beet? No, you're sure? Okay then, Brent, a salad would not eat. Then they, they looked at me and they said, Oh no, the owner is a cabbage head. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Mickler and I'm going to be writing The Crocodile's Toothache by Shel Silverstein. Oh, the crocodile went to the dentist and sat down in the chair. And the dentist said, now tell me, sir, why does it hurt and where? And the crocodile said, I'll tell you the truth. I have a terrible ache in my tooth. And he opened his jaw so wide, so wide that the, that the dentist he climbed right inside. And the dentist laughed, oh, isn't this fun? As he pulled out the teeth one by one. And the crocodile cried, you're hurting me, so please put down your flies and let me go. But the dentist laughed with a ho, ho, ho. And he said, 
I still have 12 to go. <laughs> Oops, that's the wrong one, I confess. But what's one crocodile's tooth more or less? Then suddenly the jaws went snap and the dentist went right off the map. And where he went, only one could guess. To north or south or east or west. And he left no forwarding address. But was one dentist more or less? <laughs> Maxine Chang, and I would like to recite I Am a Little Bunny, written by Unknown. I'm a little bunny, eyes on the side of my head. I can see to the left and the right behind me in the head. I'm a, I'm a little bunny. These are my very long ears. They help me hear many sounds I can hear from far and near. I'm a little bunny. My strong legs are for jumping. Warning others of danger, I use my feet for thumping. I'm a mother bunny with a white and fluffy tail. I lift it up into the air. Babies now follow my trail. Good morning, my name is Reed Cruz and I'm gonna be reciting my big fat cat. I own a big fat cat. Bad smiles around. Wherever there is lots of food, that you'll be found. He's really good at eating. It's a talent, I suppose. I'm sure if he keeps at it, he'd win the talent shows. I own a big fat cat. He weighs at least a ton. He couldn't run to save his life. Yes, he isn't much fun. He's really his favorite room is the kitchen. I'm sure we all know why. He eats at least just everything. That's why. With a sigh. I'd like to tell you, teacher, I would like to tell you straight, I might have accidentally dropped my homework in this place. <laughs> Hi, my name is Liam Doherty, and I would like to recite Lost Hat by Jeff Foxworthy. I lost my favorite hat. I don't know where it's at. I looked around my room, I looked beneath the cat, I looked beside the bathtub, I looked under the sink, where did I leave my hat? I tried and tried to think, I thought I might have left it by the TV den, it wasn't there, so I went back and checked my room again. About to cry, I found my mom, I lost my hat, I said. She smiled and said, I found it, it's sitting on your head. <laughs> Morning. My name is Shania Grover, and I would like to recite When You Turn Off the Light by Shel Silverstein. Small as a peanut, big as a giant, we're all the same size when we turn off the light. Rich as a sultan, poor as a mite, we're all worth the same when we turn off the light. Red, black, or orange, yellow, or white, we all look the same when we turn off the light. So maybe the way to make everything right is for God to just reach out and turn off the light. <laughs> Hello, my name is Michael and I will be reciting Jimmy Jet and his TV set. I'll tell you the story of Jimmy Jet, and you'll know what I tell you is true. He loved to watch his TV set almost as much as you. He watched all day, he watched all night, until it grew pale and lean, from the early show to the late show, and all the shows in between. He watched until his eyes were frozen wide, and his bone grew into his chair, and his chin turned into a tuning dial, and then tiger out of his hair and his brains turned into TV tubes, and his face to a TV screen. And two knobs sang vert and horse grew where his ears had been. And then he grew a plug that looked like a tail, so we plugged in little Jim. And now instead of him watching TV, we all sit around and watch him. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Good morning. My name is AJ, and I would like to recite Glad That I'm Me, written by Ian Bland. If I was a flag, I'd be flapping and raising. If I was a star up high, I'd be blazing. If I was a saint, I'd be singing and praying. If I was some hips, you just know I'd be swinging. If I was a bird, I'd be nesting and crowing. If I was a cup, I'd be just overflowing. If I was a mouth, I'd be laughing and joking. If I was a fire, I'd be roaring and smoking. If I was the sky, you just know I'd be lightning. If I was a ghost, I'd be spooky and frightening. But just look at me now, as plain as can be. I'm glad that I'm normal. I'm glad that I'm me. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Valentina Justice. I would like to recite First Grade, First Grade by Author Unknown. Start spreading the news, we're leaving today. We wanna be a part of it, First Grade, First Grade. We're ready to go. We worked very hard, we wanna be a part of it, First Grade, First Grade. We know our ABCs and one, two, three so well. We've learned sounding out words and stories to tell. Just ask us to rhyme, we'll say tens and pens. We've learned to share and get along with all of our friends. So now we've made it here, we'll make it anywhere. We're on our way, first grade, first grade. spaghetti. <laughs> On top of spaghetti, all covered with cheese, I lost my poor meatball when somebody sees. It rolled off the table and onto the floor, then my poor meatball rolled right out the door. It rolled in the garden and under a bush. Now my poor meatball was nothing but much. The mush was so tasty, tasty as could be. Early next summer, it grew into a tree. The tree is all covered with beautiful moss, and it grew lovely meatballs and tomato sauce. So if you like spaghetti, I'll cover it with cheese. Hold on to your meatballs and don't ever see. Achoo! <laughs> I 
that I saw a monster underneath my bed. His tongue was yellow and his eyes were red. I thought I saw a monster underneath my chair. His face was purple and he had pink hair. I thought I saw a monster in my room last night. His legs were orange and his feet were white. I thought I saw a monster in my I thought I saw a monster and that he saw me, but don't tell my mother. She'll be scared, you see. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Sarah Maldonado, and I'd like to say It's Raining Pigs and Noodles by Jack Prelutsky. It's raining pigs and noodles. It's pouring crops and hats. Chrysanthemums and poodles, bananas, brooms, and cats. Assorted prunes and parrots is dropping from the sky. Here come a bunch of carrots, some hippopotami. It's raining pence and pickles and eggs and silverware. A flood of figs and nickels is falling through the air. I see a swan, a sweater, a clock, a model train. I like it so much better than when it's raining rain. I would like to recite Homer Go Home by Jack Plexky. Homer Go Home guy, hey you stink. I wish go wash your wings and if only a bunk and I exploded the bits. Homer Go Home, you're giving me bits. I'd rather take baths with a man eating chick or else I'll lie in a lot of dirt. Eat spinach and liver to pen poogie pint, then tackle the homework, my teacher assigns. Homework go home, good. Last time I was I some can't see why you even exist. Is he just a sort of pure tickle me pink? Homework go home, I can't hate you stink. <laughs> good morning. My name is Elijah Miller and I would like to recite The Teachers Jumped Out of the Windows by Ken Nesbitt. <laughs> the teachers jumped out of the windows, the principal ran for the door, the nurse and librarian bolted, they're not coming back anymore. The, the counselor hollering madly escaped out the door of the gym, the coach and custodian shouted and ran out the door after him. The lunch ladies threw up their ladles, then fled from the kitchen in haste, while all the students looked puzzled as staff members scurried and raced. We'd never seen anything like it, but still it was pretty darn cool to see all the staff so excited to leave on the last day of school. <laughs> closet where no one can see me, then I start looking around for me. I hide. I hide in the closet where no one can see. Then they start looking around for me. I hide myself and look for myself. But once there's a shadow I took from myself, I, I hide in the corner, I hide in the bed. Then when I come near me, I pull on my head. <laughs> Where the clouds float through. What is white? A swan is white. 
sailing in the light. What is yellow? Pears are yellow, rich and ripe and mellow. What is green? The grass is green, with small flowers between. What is violet? Clear. Um, I think I'll take my shoes off and sit around in the shade. It's hot. My back is sticky. The sweat rolls down my chin. It's hot. I think I'll take my clothes off and sit around in my skin. It's hot. I've tried with electric fans and pools and ice cream cones. I think I'll take my skin off and sit around in my bones. It's still hot. <laughs> My name is Emerson. Hi, my name is Emerson Scott, and I will be um, reciting the poem "No Difference" by Shel Silverstein. Small as a peanut, big as a giant, we're all the same size when we turn out the light. Rich as a sultan, poor as a mite, we're all worth the same when we turn out the light. Red, black, or orange, yellow or white, we're we all look the same when we turn out the light. So maybe a way to make things right is for God, is for God to just reach out and turn off the light. Good morning. My name is Clayton. 
Skinner, and I would like to recite Freddy by Phil Bolster. I don't like doing homework. I know that it will bore me, but now I'm much happier because Freddy does it for me. He greets me at the door each day when I come home from school. He just can't wait to read my books. I think that's pretty cool. I give him all my homework, like history and math, and when he's done, I give him a nice warm bubble bath. My grades are so much better now, which makes my parents fly. Freddy is the smartest dog that I have ever had. <laughs> By Shel This morning I jumped on my horse and went out for a ride. And some wild outlaws chased me and they saw me on the side. So I crawled into a broadcast cave to find a place to hide. But some pirates found me sleeping there and soon they had me tied to a pole, built a fire under me and was quiet. Till the mummy came and cut me loose and begged to be my bride. But I said I would come back Wednesday and I missed him. I lied. <laughs> So I went into a jungle swamp, but I forgot my guide, and I stepped into some quicksand, and no matter how I tried, I couldn't get out until I met a watch snake named Clyde. He pulled me up to some cannibals, and planned to have me fly, and the eagle came and swooped me up and threw the air with fly, but he dropped me in a boiling lake a thousand miles wide, and, and you never guess what I did then. I died. <laughs> Harper Starkweather, and I would like to recite my scene by Hill Silverstein. Whoever's room this is should be ashamed. His underwear is hanging on the lamp. His raincoat is there in the overstuffed chair, and the chair is becoming quite mucky and damp. His workbook is wedged in the window. His sweater has been thrown on the floor. His scarf won't scare beneath the TV, and his pants have been carelessly hung on the door. His books are all jammed in the closet. His vest has been left in the hall. A lizard named Ed is asleep in his bed and his smelly old sock is stuck to the wall. Whoever's in this is should be ashamed. Donald or Robert or Willie or huh? You say it's mine? Oh dear, I knew it was familiar. <laughs> was a puffin. Other oh, once was a puffin, just the shape of a muffin. And he lived on an island in the bright blue sea. And he ate little fishes that were most delicious. And he ate them for supper and he ate them for tea. But the poor little puffin couldn't play nothing, for he hadn't anybody to play with at all. So he sat on his island and he cried for a while. And he felt very lonely and he felt very small. But then along came the fishes and said, if you wishes, it, you can have us for playmates instead of for tea. So they all played together in all sorts of weather and the puffin ate pancakes like you and like me. <laughs> to recite Boa Constrictor by Shel Silverstein. Oh, I'm being eaten by a Boa Constrictor, a Boa Constrictor, a Boa Constrictor. Being eaten by a Boa Constrictor and I don't like it one bit. Well, what do you know? It's nibbling my toe. Oh, gee, it's up to my knee. Oh, my, it's up to my thigh. Oh, fiddle, it's up to my middle. Oh, heck, it's up to my neck. Oh, dread, it's, um, Shell Stoverstein. 
Where did you get such a dirty face, my darling dirty face child? I got it from crawling along in the dirt and giving that horrible dog a big hug. No. Hello, my name is Harvey Walker. I'd like to recite Dirty Face by Tom Silverstein. I would like, where'd you get such a dirty face, my darling dirty face child? I got it from crawling along in the dirt and biting two buttons off of Jeremy's shirt. I got it from chewing the roots of the roads and digging for clams in the yard with my nose. I got it from into a dark cave and painting myself like a Navajo brave. I got it from playing with coal in the bin and signing my name in cement with my chin. I got it from rolling around in the road and giving that poor little dog a big hug. I got it from finding a lost silver mine and eating sweet back goes right off the vine. I got it from ice cream, wrestling in tears, and having more fun than you had in years. <laughs> Hi, my name's Hi, my name's Callie Wells. I like to recite I Do Not Want to Go to Bed by Ken Nesbitt. I do not want to go to bed. I like to stay up late. I'm bouncing off the bedroom walls and flakily feeling great. I'm dancing like a maniac instead of counting sheep. My mom says, time for bed. My dad yells, get yourself to sleep. I'm not sure what my bottom has to do with anything, but that's okay because I'd rather jump around than sing. I don't know what trouble made me feel this wide awake. Is it the Red Bull and the double chocolate cake? I wonder if the seven cups of coffee poses it. Or for she boys and skills or what left me this or what? Whatever it turns out to be that made me feel this wide awake. I hope I check it down so I can stay up every If you were only one inch tall, you'd ride over in the school. A teardrop of a crying ant would be your swimming pool. A crumb of cake would be a feast in last few seven days at least. A flea would be a frightening beast if you were one inch tall. If you were only one inch tall, you'd walk beneath the door. And it would take about a month to get down to the store. A bit of fluff would be your bed. You'd swing upon a spider side. You'd put a thimble on your head if you were one inch tall. You'd surf across the kitchen sink upon a stick of thumb. You couldn't hug your mama. You'd have to hug her thumb. <laughs> You'd run in people's feet and fright to move the pen would take all night. This poem took 14 years to write because I'm just one inch tall. <laughs> five but it's only four there's a rimple in your clock when your key won't work in your own front door there's a rimple in your lock when your brand new shoes refuse to fit there's a rimple in each shoe when the lights go out and they just grew lit that's a rimple it's doing too when you shake and shake but the salt won't pour there's a rimple in the salt when your when your cake falls flat on the kitchen floor it's surely a rimple's fault the way to fix these irksome works is obvious and simple. Just search and find where it lurks and then remove the rim. <laughs>
Please join us for some refreshments. 